Well, it's great to see all of you here today. Thanks for coming out for the National Day of Prayer. Uh, this is a really important part of our community that we can come together and pray in public and call upon the Lord's, Lord's hand in everything in every part of our community. So if you would please join me in prayer as we get started today. <laughs> Father, we just thank you and praise you for this wonderful community that you've given us. We thank you for our country. We thank you for your hand upon everything. Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our families and in our government and uh, in our community, Lord, in our churches. And Lord, we just pray today that as we lift all these things to you, Lord, that you intervene in the things that need to change, Lord, that you just continue to, to build us up as we exalt your holy name today. Lord, we just love you and thank you and praise you for all that you're doing, Lord. We lift this day to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Mayor Tom. Yes, sir. Welcome today. Um, I was trying to think how many years in a row we've done this. We did miss COVID, but we've, we've been here for several years now. And uh, it's always good to see people come out willing to pray. We, we are, every year I think we need prayer more than ever. And here we are again. We need prayer more than ever. Our community needs prayer. Our country needs prayer. Our world needs prayer. So as, as we join together with these pastors today, Pray with them, pray for them as they pray for us and pray for our country. Thank you. They heard God say, have you considered my servant Job? He's one who's faithful in all that he knows. His family, his land, and all his wealth. When he wouldn't curse God, Job lost his health. Job's cries could be heard from the ashes where he lay. Through the pain and sorrow, Job had to say.
It's a real blessing to be here today, and you know, I got a chance to meet some people uh, once again that was important in my life. It's two of my former coaches who meant so much to me in life, uh, who worked me hard and blessed me so by establishing the work ethic. You know that um, good things really do happen when you work hard. I'm here to uh, pray for our government. And I truly believe these people work very hard for us. I have a daughter who's worked in the federal government arm of, of, of our country. And she, did, she does say, she said, you know, Dad, I, I, I truly believe that, you know, most of the people, our elected folks, really want to see our country do well. And, and they give of themselves. And as a country, we need to do that too. We need to support them. You know, a house divided against itself will not stand. And we won't stand unless we come together united under one. Under one of the God, the Lord, you know, that saves us all. And, you know, that's our, our prayer today. I wanted to start out by reading from Second Chronicles a few verses uh, in chapter, chapter 7, beginning with verse 14. And the Lord said, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Praise the reading of the word of God to the people of God. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your blessed Son, Jesus. Father God, we love you and we praise you. We depend on you and on your faithfulness, even when things look dark around us and we cannot see light ahead. Father, thank you for being the light of all people and for being the light that shines in the darkness Thank you for being the way, the truth, and the life. And Holy Spirit, thank you for shining your illuminating light in their hearts that we may see Jesus and cry out, Abba, Father. Through you and your power, O oh God, we confess our failure to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We confess our failure to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We confess our stubborn, judgmental, critical spirits, our prejudice, our pride, and our sinful ways. Forgive us as we pray. Our nation is in an uproar, and we are utterly dependent on you, dear God, for we have already proved we cannot bring peace and unity with words, protest, violence, or legislation. Our eyes and our hearts are on you for answers and healing. Dear God, we lift up our national, state, and our local leaders up to you. We ask that our government leaders will know and deliver peace, the true peace which passes all understanding, the peace that only can be found in Christ our Lord. We pray that our leaders will know and pursue joy. Now that's a true joy that is only found in the presence of God, that they will know wisdom, the wisdom from above, which is first pure, then peaceable, undefiled, willing to yield to you, and full of mercy and goodness. Father, for those leaders and workers in government who may yet be saved, we ask that you would pour out your spirit of salvation upon them from the President of the United States to the Vice President, to the highest, to the humblest, most unknown workers in the land, let them cry out to you for mercy and for salvation. And Father, for those who refuse to be saved and refuse to honor you and walk in righteousness and justice, we pray that their days in office would be few and that another would take their office according to your will and your plans only, dear Lord. <coughs> Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that revival would fall on America beginning today. 
We ask that Christians would rise up and preach the good news of Jesus in the streets. We ask that churches would be filled again with people who are being saved. We pray that you would give us, your, your servants, boldness to preach and speak as we ought to speak. Father, we ask that you would protect the United States of America, her Constitution, her Bill of Rights. Protect the integrity of our Supreme Court for the knowledge that even though the court is called supreme, you, O oh God, are the only supreme being, and you rule over all of us. Father God, we pray that 2022 is the year in which we shall all know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. We pray that the truth of Jesus, the Word of God, shall run swiftly from border to border, from lake shore to gulf shore, and from sea to shining sea, and that all people in our great nation would no longer be deceived. They would be filled with your Holy Spirit as you spore your life-giving blood upon all flesh. Father, we humbly ask you to heal our land, turn your people and government leaders back to you, and do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we could ever dare to ask, hope, or think. We ask you, dear Lord, to give us your heart for others and fill us with a willingness for unity. Fill us with love for those most like us and for those who are least like us. Bring the united back to America and begin with me and begin with those who gather here today and help us to share your peace, your love, your healing to all people that we meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now Pastor Bill Gillian will come forward and have a prayer for our churches. I'm a blessed man today. I'm a lifelong fan of the church. Before I could talk, I was a fan of the church. And I hope you'd agree with me. You have been in the church all your life. It's the greatest opportunity we could have. So I've tried to organize my thoughts um, around a prayer for the churches, for the church worldwide. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we rejoice today that you only established your church here on this earth and that you did it in a powerful and a divine way that captures us all based on Simon Peter's and our own confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus promised to build his church to the point that even the gates of Hades could not prevail against it. Father, we claim that promise today. Lord, we live in a time of upheaval and evil resistance in this <laughs> land, and the last two years the church has taken a beating. But we stand on Christ's promise and our hope is like an anchor for our soul, sure and steadfast, because you have not forgotten us or forsaken us. In fact, you have blessed us richly through those tough years. Since Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, we realize how precious and essential the church has been and continues to be for this world. In fact, the church is the world's hope. So we praise you, Father. We acknowledge today that the church is still the body of Christ. He's the head of the body. And since we are each one members of that body, I pray that you would unite us with the spirit of unity and the bond of peace. As Christ's hands, feet, and voice give us everything we need to continue the powerful ministry of Jesus in this world, wherever we go. Father, we acknowledge today that the church is still the family of God. Brothers and sisters and members of the household of faith, we are of one blood because only the blood of Jesus cleanses and removes our sins on a regular basis. We all have access to the throne room through our high priest and his precious offering of himself. How wonderful it is that we can be your family. 
We acknowledge today, Lord, that the church is still the kingdom of God on this earth for which Christ prayed and through which your will can be accomplished down here. As Daniel said hundreds of years before Christ's presence here, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up another kingdom that will never be destroyed. Nor will it be left to another people. It will itself endure forever. Thank you, Father, that we are kingdom people as your church. Father, we acknowledge that uh, the church is still the only institution whose sole purpose it is to preach and teach the good news of Jesus, to make disciples throughout the world. Help us to remember this is kingdom work and it's Jesus' commission for every Christian to reach out and give good news. Father, we acknowledge today that the church is still the bride of Christ. He has promised that he is coming one day to receive us. So help us to live every day ready, on the edge of our seats, anxious with our oil lamps full. We look forward, Father, to the day that we will be presented to him a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish and with a righteousness that can only come through him. Father, uh, we acknowledge today that the church is still the pillar and the foundation of truth. Jesus prayed, sanctify them through the truth. Your word is truth. And Lord God, you have placed your word in our hearts, our hands, and our mouths. And whether we're using it as a sword or as an instrument of unity, peace, conversion, soulless counseling, May the truth be paramount in all of our undertakings. As with the Apostle Paul, help us to resolve that no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Christ Jesus. We pray for your church, Lord. We pray for your church locally, congregationally, nationally, worldwide, and universally. We pray for your church in the face of worn, torn nations, especially your people in Ukraine, in those nations where the church has been driven underground and yet thrives and grows, in nations where martyrdom and persecution is common. May we, Father, be driven to shame because we've been lax in our advantages and blessings. Forgive us and motivate us by your Holy Spirit. I pray for churches that stand for the truth through the undermining influences of liberalism, immorality, modernism, compromise. Just enable us to be overcomers through your Holy Spirit's power. Father and God, bless your church. And may we continue to still be the church and now to him who is able to to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen Where's our military at? Raise your hand. Welcome. I know we got Marines. I know we got Navy. I know we got Army. Where's my Air Force folk? All right. Where's the Coast Guard? Well, I invited him. I was <laughs> just didn't see him. But praise the Lord. I come to you this afternoon with a real heavy heart. A heavy heart for our military, for the decisions that so many of them are having to face. The military more today knows what it is to be in service 
to be servants of a higher power. You don't believe me, ask a recruit, especially when they just come out of boot camp. They have no thoughts. All right, it's whatever someone told them. As our world has digressed into political turmoil, the people that serve so often are the ones who are made to do things that they may not have a say-so in and that they feel very immoral for them to do. So we pray for our men and our women in every, in every post, in every base, ship, every plane throughout the world. And we'd like to remind them that what they are doing is important not just for America, but for people of all the world. And that if they are Christians, they have a higher call. It is to serve God while they're serving in a place where they have no say so. Stay faithful, stay strong, stay in God. And God will lead you. We exalt the Lord today who has established the military. I always wonder where they come up with some of these things, you know. The Lord has established his throne in heavens and his sovereignty rules over all. God alone commands his heaven's army, his angels mighty in strength who perform his word obeying the voice of his word. Yes. But today I want to, each one of us to think of a different military. The one that I've asked our military and I'm praying for our military to serve God, I'm asking them to join the army of Christ. And I'm asking you to join the army of Christ along with us. For in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we read, Now I, Paul, myself am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold, I toward you. I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some, who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Here in some reading. I ask you, do not let this day be the only day you pray for the military. Pray for them every day. Pray for our men and women that suffer because of wounds that they have received in action, be it emotional, mental, or physical. And pray for those who, who struggle with the morality of what they are being asked to do, that God would strengthen them, and that they, being warriors in Christ Jesus, they would come through unscathed. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious and wonderful King, you've called us not just to be children, 
not just to sit and receive, but you, Almighty God, have called us to be a mighty army before you, to go out into the world and to share your good news, to preach, to teach, to baptize, to bring in, to introduce. Lord, we go out into the world with a spiritual warfare, not relying upon our own ability, but relying upon your ability, your power, your authority. Lord, we ask this now, that you would bless and keep our military, that you, Almighty God, would give to the leaders, those who sit in authority in, in commands, the truth of your love and your grace and your desire for all humanity, that they would not act in political designs, but would act for your love, for peace, that they, Almighty God, would look to save life and not to endanger life. Keep our brothers and sisters in arms healthy. Protect their families, Lord. Watch over them. This, Lord, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And the church says, Amen. So I would hand over for the prayer of family, Elder Randall Allen. Praying for the families today. There's a lot of crucial stuff going on in families. And believe me, I know, because uh, my family, uh, we get, some, get into deep conversations, what's going on in the world today, about families, fathers, mothers, the children are involved, different things that are attacking our family, that uh, this nation and communities that our children are facing, when God established families, he established Adam as being the man, the first man created by God. And then he created a woman because Adam was by himself, but he made them one, man and woman, not man and man, not woman and woman. But to establish a family, you have to have a father who is the head of that family. But uh, looking in your pamphlet, how we exalt God, how he established families. But the crucial thing is that families are so divided and we have to come together and pray for one another as family in a community and lift up one another. Because if I get started uh, talking about different things and I don't want to get too excited, but God is so good to all of us. And to have a family and, and to discuss things and have questions coming to you, you have to have the word of God deep down inside of your heart to let them know what God stands for. God is a holy God. He's the one that created us. He made us in his image that we can glorify his name, that we can live for him, that we can let our light shine before men, that they may glorify him in heaven. Praise God. And I'm going to get ready to pray. Father God, I thank you for your goodness and your tender mercy, Lord. Thank you, O oh God, for the families that are joined together today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we graciously thank you, Lord God, for keeping your hand upon us. And as we have fathers in the homes, Lord God, mothers, some of them are raising the children by themselves, Lord God. But Lord, you give them strength, Lord God, that they would teach them the right way. You said when we train up a child in the right way, oh God, when they turn old, they would not depart from it. Father, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, we stand on your word because you are an holy God. You are a just God. You are a faithful God. And we look to you, Lord God, for all our answers. And Father, in the families, oh God, we thank you, oh God, because wisdom builds up families, builds up foundations. And we stand on your wisdom because, oh God, you, you're so wonderful to us. And Father, we ask you to turn away everything that's trying to deceive in the families. And in, in the boys and the girls, oh God, that you would turn away that wickedness in the name of Jesus. That they realize that you are the holy God that created them. 
And Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that mothers and fathers would get together and love one another, love their children. And Lord, teach them, oh God, your word, that they would walk in the newness of life. Father, we bless your name, oh God, because there is nothing too hard for you. Father, you are not the God of confusion, oh God, but you are the author and finisher of our faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, because you said you would not be deceived, Lord God. And God, you said, let no man deceive us, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify your name, Lord. We need you like never before. We thank you, Lord God, because you're still on your throne and Jesus is at your right hand, making intercession for his people. And we thank you, Lord God, that you put no more than we can bear. We thank you for taking us through in the families, Lord. Many are going through, Lord God, don't even know what to say in the morning to their sons and daughters. But Lord, we just ask you to establish in their mind, oh God, to let them know that your mercy is with them, that you can give them what to say to their children. Lord, just have your way, oh God, that we leave this, live this life, Lord God, and just live it to, to your ability, oh God, to live it to the way you want us to please you. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we ask you to have your way in our life. And Lord, as we leave, oh God, from this place today, Lord God, that we be an example to those who are not saved, Lord God, that they will say, what must I do to be saved in the family, in this community, Lord? And we thank you, and we praise you, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Let's pray for the education system in our land. Oh, Lord, our God, the scriptures we hold dear repeatedly speak of your law, and yet we know that that same word for law can better be translated teaching. And its practice is not some form of legalism, but is instead a way of life, of living for you. And with that understanding, we pray for the education in our land. There are a few places in our common life together where Jefferson's wall of separation between church and state stands so high as in the education system. And yet our faith tells us that you are Lord of all yes. and that you are at work in all creation, even in the secular parts of our lives. <laughs> so we pray for education in America. We pray for teachers and staff, those who are required to take up the loose ends of the frayed social fabric of our land and do what seems to be nearly impossible. Grant them wisdom and courage. Clothe them with compassion, with consideration, indeed clothe them with the fruits of your Holy Spirit. Remind us too, that we who are of the general public to be quick not to criticize, but to support our teachers and staff, because often it is a thankless profession. Surround the schools of our land with your protection from senseless shootings, for demonic displays of violence and harm. Bless as well our students. Enable them not merely to learn, but to learn to be who you call them to be and to fulfill the potential that you give each person. Hear now our prayers for education in our land and help us to remember to pray for it, not just on the first Thursday in May, once a year. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Forever Matlack will come for prayer for the media. I'm thankful for what Pastor Gary just said there about how God is Lord of all, even in what is secular. All of us sometimes go through that trap where we're trying to separate what is holy from what is sinful, that we also separate what is religious from what is secular. But God is Lord of all. The Psalms tell us that the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. And so we pray for our arts and for our media, for our literature, everything, because um, that has such 
an impact on our lives. Such an influence over all who are consuming media, especially people of my age and the generations younger who are glued to their screens, whether it's a computer screen or an iPhone screen or a television screen. And we just prayed for education. I was a teacher before I became a pastor, and we use media as we teach. So let's pray for this, and if you don't mind, Pastor Bill, I'm going to use the same scripture that you closed with, because I think that is appropriate for what I'm praying for. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the creator of all things. When we look at nature, which is the work of your hand, we see beauty and majesty. We see things beyond what we can comprehend, and it evokes such emotion and passion in us when we see a painted sunset or a mountain with ridges, when we hear the sound of a brook. Lord, all that you have created is wonderful and beautiful, and you have created us as well in your image. And Lord, you commanded us in Genesis to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth with your glory. Lord, you have gifted each and every one of us with creative abilities, different gifts and talents with which we can glorify you. And Lord, you call people with these different gifts and talents to write books, to act, to dance and to sing, to be in movies and on TV. And Lord, this is such a wonderful thing. God, for those who have aspirations to be in media, for those who desire to display the talents that you have given them, whether it's on a sports field or in a theater, I pray, O oh Lord, over them that you would guide them and fill them with strength, ingenuity, creativity. I pray, Lord God, even for those here in Covington and in Allegheny County, those going to school who are in the band and in the theaters and doing different extracurricular activities, Lord God, that is such a good thing. And I pray that you will guide them and fill them with passion for the things that you have gifted them in and help them to pursue their dreams that they might share joy and love and entertainment to those who will see them in action. God, I do pray for us who are consumers of media, who watch television shows and things on YouTube on a daily basis. Lord, I pray that you will guard our eyes from what we watch and our ears from what we hear, and most of all, guard our, our hearts, Lord, to decipher and discern the things that we are consuming. Lord, not all of it is of you, and I pray, Lord God, that we will just be careful and that we will guard what we consume and we will guard what we consume on behalf of our children. Lord, I pray that you will fill the newsrooms of this country. I pray that you will fill places like Hollywood with people who produce art for your glory. And that when people are on the receiving end and, and seeing these things, listening to this music, watching that performance, God, they will see your truth. And just like watching a sunset, looking up at a ridge, hearing the sound of a brook, it would evoke such emotion. God, you've created us in your image to share your glory. For those who are called to entertain, entertainment, I pray, Lord God, that you will fill them with that passion and that desire. And I thank you, Lord God, that we're not all called to the same vocation, but we all get to go out into the world and do various things to bring you glory and show other people 
the amazing story of your grace. And that's another thing that's just so remarkable, God, when it comes to thinking about arts and literature. You speak to us through story, in poetry, in history, in this thing that we call the good book, the holy scripture. It is the story of salvation. It is a priceless work of art that you have written by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the story of salvation, which is for us and for our benefit and to your glory. May we read this book that you have penned. May we take it to heart. And may we have the desire to share it with all of our neighbors and those that you are calling unto yourself. And as my brother Bill has already said, Lord, to you, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to your power, is at work within us to you be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Mr. Wes Walker is going to come on up now. His name shall be exalted. I'd like just to share a personal little testimony with you, and I'll keep it short. Because I think sometimes we, we realize that his name should be exalted. But let's talk about a practical example just a minute. So as you all know, I own, my wife and I own Tri-County Furniture. So we'll take you back to March of 2020. You all know what that was, a little thing called COVID. Well, we were away celebrating my wife's birthday. We came back to the news. Wasn't even sure if we'd be able to be open. Hmm. Now, we usually owe about $200,000 a month in bills, and we might not be able to be open. And, you know, people may not want to work. Even though furniture has legs, none of it will self-deliver. So who are we going to get to deliver all of our stuff if everybody stops working? And then the manufacturers started calling. Well, we'll be out of stuff for months. You probably need to go ahead and order three or four times more than what you normally order. So go ahead and extend yourself out for a million dollars. What's the big deal? Nothing like a crisis to bring you to your knees. And that's where I spent a lot of time that first two or three weeks of this. You know, Lord, are we going to be able to survive this? Lord, i got other people's families that depend on getting a paycheck from me. Am I going to be okay? Now, his name should be exalted because it was a funny thing. And I'm not smart enough to have pulled it off. You can ask my wife. She'll tell you. The year of the pandemic and last year is the best years I've ever had since I've been in business. That makes no sense. Tell me how that makes sense. Other than it's the grace of God. Amen. It's all it can be. Because like I said, I'm not smart enough to pull that off. So his name shall be exalted. And don't get me wrong, we still face issues. We got the fuel bill last week for the trucks, $4,000 for a month. Wow. But he still provides. God. Your things still take a long time to get. I've got a sign up in the office. It says, lady, you could get a baby before I can get you a sofa. <laughs> it's sad, but it's true. But the Lord still provides. He should be exalted. Let's pray. We exalt the Lord who established business, the workplace. You are the potter, and we are the clay. Your workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which you established and prepared beforehand, so that we would walk in them. You have established our gifts and talents, education and experiences, and we commit to our works to knowing you our plans will be established. You set Adam's hand to cultivate the garden. You created us to be active and to accomplish, to labor and not be lazy in our living. Our work is worship, a response to your work and in our lives. God, I just pray that you will continue 
to bless the businesses in our area, Lord. God, I pray that the businesses would be good stewards to our community. Because, God, that's what we are. We are a community. We all need to support one another. God, I would ask that you would keep our workers safe. Lord, and the little retail stores and the big corporate meals, Lord, that you would just keep everyone safe, God. Things can change in the blink of an eye. And that can happen while someone's at work. So God, we just ask that you would have them be ready. God, again, we thank you for your blessings. We admire you for your knowledge, Lord, of how to lead us through crisis. And in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on and put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank all of my co-labors in the gospel. I'd like to thank each one of you for coming out today. Amen. Amen. Truly, my heart is heavy. All of our hearts are heavy. If we look around today in the world that we live in, we know that we truly are under attack. But I'm so glad that we don't have to lean on our own strength. Amen. How many of y'all know if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Now, I didn't come to preach today, but I just come to remind you of who we are in Christ. Amen. As I sat there, I asked God, what do I say to his people? Amen. Because we are brothers and sisters in the faith. Amen. And he reminded me of this church. Amen. We're the church. King David said this. I was glad. Great, baby. Woo. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the church. Some people saying, has she lost her mind that this is not a church, but we are the church. Woo, I feel my help from above. We are the church. And not only are we the church, but we're here at the government city hall petitioning our God in faith. Give God a hand. See, see, listen, church. Please listen. When you have certain privileges, <clears throat> hallelujah, when you have certain privileges, you don't even realize them until you no longer have them. Amen? Our brothers and sisters don't have the privileges that we have. We are at our government building petitioning God in prayer. Amen? Listen, listen. God said, tell my people this. In the book, 1 John 4, chapter 4, verse 4, it says this, greater is he that's in us. Did you hear me, church? Greater is he that's in us than he that is in this world. Amen. Listen, listen, I'm going to just give you a word. I'm a word person. Anybody know me? I'm a word person. Listen, if one can put a thousand to flight, two, two thousand, look around. We got more than two. Yeah. We come to do war, not in our own strength, church, but in the strength of God. And, and, and this is why I like this. It says, we exalt the Lord who established us. We didn't create God. He created us. Amen. And listen, we're going to put him in his rightful place. He's God over all things. Amen. My brother Mike told us, he said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwells in it. Amen. Amen. So we come not defeated, but as victors today, because we know, we know in whom we believe. And not only do we believe in him, but we know if he started a thing, Brother Allen, he's faithful to complete 
that thing. Amen. So my job today, oh my God, I feel the spirit. Amen. What is it doing, church? It's moving. Oh my God. It's moving in here. Amen. Listen, listen. I want to tell you this, and then I'm going to do what part of what God has called me to do. Amen. You're not here by happenstance today. Amen. Amen. Each one of you belong to a body of Christ. Now, some people didn't get the opportunity to be here, but you're here. And because you're here, God's going to entrust you. He has entrusted you with some words that you heard today. Amen. And your job is to take it back to where you worship. Amen. And let people know that our God still reigns on high. Amen. So my job is to read the National Day of Prayer 2022. And I want to challenge you today. You can read it with me silently as I read it aloud, okay? We're coming together. And we're declaring words. When God created the world, he spoke. And everything he spoke, church, came into existence. And that same creative power that abide in Jesus abides in us. So I want you to speak these words as though you are speaking them to the Lord. Amen? Because we are victors. We are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We're blessed coming in and we're blessed coming out. Amen? Are y'all ready? Y'all got suited up like me? Y'all ready to tell the devil, get up under our feet? Amen. Go and give God a hand, pray. Okay, here we go, church. Amen. I love y'all. I want to tell you that. I may not get to see all of you after this, but I want to tell you I love you, and I'm fighting with you for what we know is truth. Amen. Here we go. It's in your brochure right here. The National Day of Prayer. And as we speak this, these words, brothers and sisters all over the world are praying the same thing. Let's speak. Lord, we exalt you. We are filled with awe and wonder as our praise joins the heavenly host, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You, Lord, established the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. You alone are the creator. The earth is yours and all it contains is for your glory. You, Lord, created and established all of us as your image barriers. May our lips and lives continually praise you, reflecting and magnifying you in all our words and ways. You are the author of our days. You have established your plans and purpose for us. We respond, Lord, to your glory and authority in obedience to your word and will. You have established prayer that we, your children, can communicate with our Heavenly Father directing, strengthening, and disciplining us, discipling us in your everlasting love. We join heaven's activities as we lift up our prayers and pour out our praise, repentance, thanks, intercession, and, Lord, supplication. Lord, you have established America through the hearts of our founding fathers and the documents that penned declaring our dependence on your sovereignty and supremacy. We overflow with gratitude, having been firmly rooted and built up in our faith in you. Let 
please God. Our reputation be of our faith in Christ, in Christ alone. Our love for all people and fruitful lives bearing the attitude, affections, and actions of your spirit who dwells and work within us and through us. We pray for America, the church, family, education, military, workplace, government, arts, entertainment, and media. United in your love, we exalt the Lord who has established us. In Jesus' name, we always pray. Amen. Amen. And, and let me just share one other thing with you, and then I'm going to take my seat. If you're like most churches, we look around in our churches and we don't see the youth or not as many young people in the church like when we were growing up. I am a WRE teacher, and for you all that do not know that, that's weekday religious education teacher. And I just want to let you know, in the Allegheny Hallets, we have three teachers, and each week we give the word to almost 400 young people. So God is still moving. Amen. God bless you. In case you're wondering, that's the world's smallest band. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Uh, you know, I shouldn't be amazed at things that have take, that taken place here today because all of it has been lined up and uh, has been exactly what God wanted to say. Yes. And, you know, everything that we do and everything that we say if we do it in the power of the Lord, it all goes back to Him, His glory and His honor. But we need to realize that that's where our strength comes from. And um, I want to read, to, and then I'll start, so I want to read this course to you because it, it just sums up everything that's going on here today. It says, I have joy in the time of sorrow. I have peace in the raging storm. I have faith that Jesus holds tomorrow. I have hope. I'm resting in His arms. And uh, that's what I'm doing, resting in his arms. Strength 
the race I've run And by His grace these words I'll say here today father lord and i pray that we will take what we've heard lord and use it for your glory and your kingdom lord that we would depend totally upon you and no one else on you that you're where our power comes from to live lord you where our our joy comes from our faith comes from and our peace from comes from because you are our peace and our joy and our faith so we love you and i ask your blessings on us father lord help us to to live for you Help us to be pleasing to your eyes. That's what I want to do. I want to be pleasing to your eyes. And I know if I do that, then, then one of these days I'll hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. Yes. Lord, help us to reach the millions and the hundreds or whatever around here that don't know you as their Savior. That's the most important thing, that they come to know Jesus as their personal Savior. We love you and praise you and thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I just want to thank all of you for coming. I want to thank all the pastors and speakers. And it has been a glorious uh, National Day of Prayer 2022. So thank you and may God bless you and may you be blessed the rest of this day and the rest of this year. God bless you all. Amen.